I'm Angelina with the City of Portland, Maine. I work in the Office of Economic Opportunity, and today we're here to celebrate Welcoming Week. Welcoming Week is celebrated in thousands of cities across the United States to help make sure everyone feels like they belong. Fostering a sense of belonging is a key element to the Office of Economic Opportunity's work. I know that many of you are joining us, I can see it now, on joining us on Facebook Live and on Zoom, so we will give a few seconds before we get started with the cooking instructions. If you're joining us from home in your kitchens, make sure you have your meal kit handy, and then we'll get started with the cooking instructions. Today we are filming at Wayside Food Programs. Wayside Food Programs supports people in our community who are experiencing food insecurity. They partner with tons of pantries and community meals, and they're also a key partner for Welcoming Week to help foster a sense of belonging for all. Today, I'm joined by Chef Akalilu from Miat Catering. Chef, would you mind introducing yourself to everyone who's joining us today? Hello, my name is Akalilu. I'm uh, the owner and the chef of Miat Catering. We're uh, excited to share our uh, lentil stew recipe here uh, with you guys for the welcoming week. I uh, want to say thank you for the uh, economic opportunity office and the Wayside program that they told us to be part of this program. So there's no place to feel more welcome like when you're in someone's kitchen. So today we're cooking in this Wayside kitchen and I hope that everyone is cooking in their own kitchen, kitchen experiencing a sense of home. Chef, I do have some questions already coming in for you and we promise that we try to answer as many of them as possible. And a question that keeps popping up is where are you from? Originally I'm from Ethiopia. I came to uh, Maine 15 years ago. Wow, and so, and Portland's been your home for over 15 years now? Yes, this was my first state and I'm still here and I love it. Awesome, so um, those of you who are now kind of joining us, I've seen the numbers grow, we're so excited to have you. Thank you for participating in Welcoming Week, for helping to make sure that everyone can feel like they belong in our city of Portland, Maine. Um, for those of you who are joining us, we're going to ask you to take out your meal kit. So you, must, you may have picked up an orange bag at Wayside earlier this week. Or you may have had one delivered to your house. And in it, you'll find ingredients for two totally different recipes. One is for Niat Catering's amazing lentil stew. And that's going to come out on this kind of orange piece of paper. The other is on a green, uh, with green bubbles. And that's for Kiro Cafe for tomorrow night. So you can set that one aside. And we'll just focus on this orange piece of paper. When you flip it over, you'll see you've got the recipes in Spanish, French, Portuguese and English, because these are some of our top languages spoken in the city of Portland. You can follow along and just do the recipe all by yourself, but we'd love to get those pro tips from the chef on how to make his famous lentil stew. What else do we have in the meal kit for, to make our stew tonight? Uh, the first ingredient we have is lentils, brown lentils. Uh, this should be like two cups. Exactly two cups. I measured okay. it myself. Very good. So this is the first ingredient we're going to work on. Uh, we will also need a medium onion, yellow onion. We also have uh, one tomato. There's a couple other tomatoes in your bag. Feel free to save them for tomorrow night. They're for the other recipe. Yes, and we need one of this olive oil. And then the spice mix. Oh, the secret spice mix. Yes, that's, and I will get us two. Awesome. So once you use these two clubs, you're going to want to save a couple other clubs for tomorrow night. Yes. But we can move the orange bag out of our way in our kitchen for tomorrow. But these are the things you'll need to get started. And just... Alright chef, so to make this stew, perfect fall dish, love lentils, really healthy, great for people who have iron deficiencies, there's all kinds of health benefits, we've got a totally vegetarian meal here. What do we need to do first? So the first thing we do is we wash these lentils. They really need to be washed very well. So I dump them here. And then I'm going to get water. So I use cold water. You can use your hands to just rub them around to make sure they get washed well. Yeah. Then I, I will dump this one again and then a couple of more times. Uh, 
And I just I do it one more time to make sure it is clean. We need to wash uh, really well. That way. Okay, now. Uh, so I set aside this one here. First I wash them, I put them aside here. And then, I'm gonna get water. I will uh, put it on the oven uh, or stove and turn it on. Make sure this one gets warm until you prepare the onions and tomatoes. Hey chef, before we keep going, I do have some questions coming in. Everyone wants to know how big should the onions be? Can you use, does, can it be any kind of onion? Which is the best onion for your lentil soup? Uh, for two cups of lentils, uh, you can use like a medium sized onion. You can use uh, less onion if you don't like onions. There is really not a right or wrong size on the onion. Uh, so it can be any size onion and it can be sweet onions, yellow onions, red onions, any type. And I prefer this one because this is a little cheaper. Uh, if you need a little quality one, a lot of people like red onions. So it's up to our taste, what we like to Awesome. Eat, Thank yeah. you all so much for these questions that are coming in on Facebook Live. You can keep on dro dropping them in the chat box and I'll do my best to get them to the chef. Okay, so I'm gonna chop the onion. I just throw the dry part, the top, the top skin. So this can be also blended if you want to blend it. It doesn't have to be chopped only by knife. So once we do this, I'll get this in my uh, pot. Okay. Then I need the little bit of spoon to... Uh, One of these? Yes. Let's get one. Yes. I'm gonna use one of these and mix them together with the olive oil. And then uh, turn it on. I'm just gonna lift this speaker thing closer to you and ask you to make you repeat what you said. What do you think, Josh? Would that be no, I think, I think we're fine. I think yeah. I picked it up. So the heat can be a little bit uh, on a medium until this thing saturates for like five minutes. That way the, onions, the onion doesn't burn from us. I'm gonna now cut the tomato. are from native veins and they're all locally grown and were delivered to Wayside just in time for the milk. But shout out to Native Maine for helping us get this amazing produce locally grown for these amazing recipes. The tomatoes also can be uh, blended in a machine if you have a blending machine. Uh, 
And in the meantime, uh, keep an eye on the onions and olive oil that we dazzle them. When you are chopping onions and tomatoes, if you are wearing the gloves, be careful the gloves sometimes can get uh, in the food. This is enough. So now I'm gonna wait a little bit until the onions um, saturate and looks like a little brownish. While we wait for those onions, I do have another question to come again. Thank you very much to those of you tuning in. What everyone wants to know is how has your business adapted as a result of COVID? The wearing the masks is probably different. What else have you done to keep your business going? Uh, it's a tough time for business because of COVID, but uh, uh, thanks to the uh, Office of uh, Opportunities in the city of Portland, Wayside uh, Program, Fort Food Lab, we have a lot of different resources which are helping us to keep going. So before uh, I add tomatoes, I'm going to add this uh, onions, uh, garlic. I just take, uh, smash it and separate the skin out of it. Chef, while you peel that garlic, I do want to answer another burning question, and it is tomorrow night, same time, same place, we'll have a new chef coming in. We'll have We'll have new chefs coming in from Quiero Cafe, Alejandra Her Herrera and her husband Carlos will be joining us to teach us about making rice and beans. So please keep those rice and beans in your food kit for tomorrow night. Thanks everyone. So now uh, you can, it doesn't have to be uh, very well chopped. This is just for uh, to give a little flavor for the stew. I'll now add this into this and gonna mix it together. Hey, Jeff, is this one of your most popular dishes that you had catering? Yeah, this is really our uh, very, very famous uh, uh, stew. A lot of people like it because lentils are uh, low in calories and very rich in um, uh, protein. So. We have a lot of uh, vegans and vegetarians who really ask for this. And um, if someone wanted to order lentil stew for an event or a corporate party or even just for a large order, what would they do to order lentil stew or something else off of your menu? Uh, just contact us uh, through on phone or on the uh, Facebook page. Order whatever you need and we will happily deliver it for you. Awesome, thanks. Thank you. So now uh, the onions. You can uh, see it's turning a little bit brownish. So this is the time when we add uh, the tomatoes. So again, now this uh, needs to be saturated or being cooked together for another five minutes. If uh, you don't want this to burn, if you leave it there for too long, it's gonna uh, get burned. So what I do is, we have water here warming up. Just put a little water in it like this. And then uh, mix them together. Mary, thank you so much for joining us. This is Mary Zolinski, everyone, the Executive Director of Wayside Food Programs, and she's part of the reason we're able to celebrate welcoming this week this year. Mary, thank you so much for joining us. Well, thanks for doing this. I, you know, we, we are all about cooking and sharing food, and I think this is a great way to kick off welcoming week. Awesome. So just um, for those of you who don't know, maybe you could share with us a little bit more about how Wayside Food Programs works and how you guys got started? Yeah, well, Wayside actually started um, 
many, many, many years ago by just a group of neighbors that were coming together to um, realizing that there was a need to have some extra meals in their community that people were really hungry. For many years, Wayside actually ran the soup kitchen at Preble Street Resource Center. And in about 2011, we separated and started doing what we call our community meals, which are meals out in the community at different neighborhood sites and weekly so that people could develop a following and could feel comfortable going there. Um, so much of what we do is we do food rescue. So we rescue food, which means that we take donations of food from all kinds of large stores and food purveyors and we share that food with pantries, we cook that food in our kitchen and share it with our community um, and we've been doing this a long time. It's like really exciting. So for those of you who have your meal kits at home, just know that Wayside has been the warehouse, the drop off, the distribution center, the packers and the measurers. We've taken over their kitchen for welcoming weekend. We're so appreciative for all you've done to make this happen. So today, we're joining forces with some people who really know an awful lot about food. We've got Chef Ackley Lou and Mary, who are kind of food experts. And so the big question is, tell us more about the Bear Buddha Spice. Like, I feel like I need to know more. Mary needs to know more. We all need to know more. Okay, so Bear Buddha will look uh, like this. It's a red uh, powder. It's a, a mixture of different make, uh, spices. I can uh, read some of the ingredients can be added. So it can be like uh, uh, or cumin powder, uh, ginger root, some uh, um, I don't know how to say this car. Yeah, and then uh, turmeric powder. So the secret on this. Uh, about this Berbera is how much of the spice you mix together with this uh, red pepper, which is uh, ground. And in Ethiopia, traditionally, this can be added in all stew. It can be, uh, you can add this in a chicken stew, beef stew, uh, lentil stew, and other uh, vegetables you wanna make. Well, it sounds like I'm making everyone share their secret. So Mary, this question's for you. Tell us the secret. How does someone get connected to the food system in Portland, Maine, if they're in need or if they want to rep, if they want to help somebody else in the community figure out where they could get a meal or groceries? Well, we are on, um, we have a great website that's very interactive. Um, we are on Facebook, we're on Instagram. We're right here in Portland. Um, so sometimes people just kind of wander in and ask us for some suggestions and help where they can call us. But I would always tell people to start at the website and see if there's anything else you need and then give us a call. It's awesome. And so I've got another question then for both of you. Um, I'd like to know, you know, what about food helps you bring people together, whether it's at Neat Catering or Wayside Food? What's, what's the best way to bring people together and how do you use food to foster a sense of belonging for everyone? Well, I think he just explained it. This, all the spices, it's, there's a particular tradition associated with it, and you know what you need to make to make it your tradition. And I think people love sharing other people's traditions. And so to understand that in that food that you're making is a long history of many, 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 many other chefs and um, the desire to bring people together and to share that food with others. What about you, Chef? How are you bringing people together with food? I agree with Mary. She said it's uh, exactly... Uh correctly and people always like sharing recipes and tasting different foods because uh, let alone here at home people travel from different places to see the culture food and taste the uh, different types of food so uh, I agree with what Mary said and not only that but some most here in Maine with our business Many people on purpose come out to support us, even if they are not uh, really are not going to consume the food. They would just come uh, to support us by purchasing our food. Well, what do you guys think? Do you think we should go stir the stew and give it a try, see if the lentils are done yet? And for those of you at home watching the timer, I don't think it's been our full 30 minutes, but maybe we can have a sneak peek. Yeah, let's go check it out. Yeah, 
Yeah, uh, it's still uh, not really cooked, but we can always uh, yeah uh, give it a try. You can tell by looking at it; it's a little bit uh, dry yet. So, have you put the um, the bear bear in yet? Yeah. You put it in right away. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you wanna, uh, you wanna get a spoon. I know it's not uh, really uh, cooked yet, so we're gonna. Everybody, we'll take a few steps back and try to get six feet apart in this these COVID times. You all want to stay the course and keep wearing our masks, but I just need to know what these lentils taste like. It tastes delicious. I mean, I've eaten lentils, and this is lentils, special lentils, because it doesn't just taste. You don't just taste the lentils; you taste the spice. Yeah, that, that's the point. That's the secret um, of the stew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can um, just boil it by itself, make a different flavor. The spice is the really the secret of. Um, really? Yeah. yeah. But for, the those stew, of, gonna... for those of you joining at home. I do know that we've got some messages coming in. I've got one more question. Mary, what's the web page that we should go to? So it is um, Wayside Food Programs. Um, I'm trying to think of the address now because I can see that more. Just .org. Yep, waysidefoodprograms.org. Um, and if you just Google Wayside Food Programs, you'll, it'll pop right up. And for people who are interested in making a contribution to kind of thank you for your generous support, they can make those donations online. Totally online if you, if you like to. We still get people who like to send us checks with nice little notes because we really want to hear from people about how they're feeling, how they're doing. You know, these are, these are difficult times to not be able to connect with people we've worked with for so long. So. Awesome. And then, uh, Chef, I do have a couple more questions coming in. And then we want to let people go ahead and connect with those who are in their house and eat their stew. But everyone needs to know, what else is on the menu at Neon Catering so we can get in on some corporate events, pop-up shops, um, deliveries for groups larger than 15 or more. Tell us how we, what, what else we could have besides this lentil stew if we were to call you. We, we have a beef stew, chicken stew, a cooked veggies, and rice with chicken, and any other uh, orders we can make it in our way. Awesome. Uh, and, and it all comes on a special bread called injera. I have a sample if you want to see that, I will show you later. Put this here. Magic of television. So this is the special bread, uh, we call it injera. It's a spongy Ethiopian bread. It's supposed to be made out of a small um, grain, which is called teff. So uh, this is our uh, traditional uh, main bread, and it can be eaten with all different stews of your choice: beef, chicken, veggies. And do you can you make the teff? Make the bread yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we, we buy the teff flour. Uh, this one is a brown teff, 100% teff by itself. But uh, uh, sometimes it's very hard to find the uh, teff flour, so we sometimes we will mix it with some wheat. But we the bread we made. Yeah, it it takes. It's not easy to make it. it takes about four to five days to be fermented. And we have a special grill, grill which we cook on. So using that. We make all this at the uh, food lab. Alice, I see your question. Is teff flour gluten free? Can people who have a gluten intolerance enjoy injera? Yes, teff flour normally is gluten free, but sometimes uh, it's um, tricky. It uh, depends on who, who, who prepares it and where they mix them. So sometimes it can come in contact with the facilities where they make others. So it's always um, good to be careful. Or it's good to ask. Yeah, yeah. So for those of you who are enjoying the show tonight, you can keep on uh, sharing the story, sharing these amazing recipes from Neat Catering and Wayside Food Programs. We'd love for you to let us know using the hashtag, I belong in Portland because. So what makes you feel like you belong here? We want to know. Hashtag, I belong in Portland because. Thank you for celebrating Welcoming Week and joining the national movement to foster a sense of belonging for everyone. If you're at home, it might be time to check your lentils and serve them up for your family. 
Tune in tomorrow night to meet Piero Cafe. We'll have two amazing chefs, one from Chile and one from Colombia, telling us the secret to their rice and beans. Same platforms. See you soon. Thank you all so much. I hope that you'll join us on social media to keep spreading the word about NIAT catering and wayside food programs. And from all of us at the city of Portland, stay the course.